Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, presenting video 8.3.4 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a video describing the retrograde approach through Southern Vein Grafts. There are 10 steps for the retrograde approach, and we will discuss each step as it applies to retrograde through Vein Grafts. Step number one is to decide to go retrograde. Based on the global CTO crossing algorithm, we go retrograde if there is ambiguity on the proximal cap, poor distal vessel quality, or when undergrade attempts uh, fail. And of course, that requires that uh, we have acceptable risks and options for the retrograde approach. Going retrograde through SVGs has intermediate risks compared with the septals and the epicardial collaterals. So the benefits should be more than the potential risks of going retrograde through SVGs. Step number two is to select the SVG as the retrograde conduit. Bypass grafts are usually less tortuous than septal and especially epicardial collaterals. They have a low risk of tamponade. They are usually easier to wire even when the bypasses are occluded. They can be dilated with balloons and the risk of ischemia is generally low. In the Progress CTO registry, Approximately 17% of all retrograde CTO PCIs were done through Safenur vein grafts. The risk of the procedure if we go retrograde through SVGs is in between that of septals and epicardial collaterals, so in general, the bypasses, the vein grafts are preferred over epicardial collaterals. The vein grafts can be used whether they are patent or occluded, with some exceptions, Specifically, if there is a blunt stump, usually this is not safe to puncture because the risk of perforation increases. But if we have a nice entry into the occluded saphenous vein graft, then one can try retrograde through this occluded saphenous vein graft. And having previous angiograms to review when the vein graft was open can help clarify the course of the vein graft and where it touches down into the native vessel. Now, one may ask, if the SVG is open, then why bother do the native CTO? And the answer is that vein grafts are often diffusely degenerated or they tend to have recurrent failure. So in those cases, recanalizing the native vessel provides better long-term patency. Another, another case where recanalizing the native vessel is preferred is when we have complete vein graft occlusion. This is an example of a patient with acute inferior MI due to occlusion of a vein graft. At the first stage, uh, the vein graft was recanalized to minimize the myocardial injury. But then a few weeks later, the patient came back and the vein graft was used to achieve retrograde recanalization of the native right coronary artery, which again provides better long-term patency than the vein graft that previously occluded. Rarely, this can be done even in the acute setting. For example, when we have a very diseased vein grafts with a very large thrombus burden that cannot be canalized acutely, in such cases, sometimes opening the native coronary CTO can be done at the same setting. Moving on to step number three, which is to reach the saphenous vein graft. The guides to use are amplets left for the left-sided bypass grafts. This provides good support, or usually the multipurpose for saphenous vein grafts to the PDA. In terms of size, we prefer larger size, seven or eight friends. It's ideal for the guides to be short, 90 centimeters or even shorter. Side holes are generally not used. Guide extensions are very useful to increase the support and often engaging the vein grafts and the support is better going through femoral axis. Sometimes in bypass patients, we may have the need for triple arterial axis. For example, this patient with RCA CTO has filling of the posterior lateral to the native left system, but the filling of the PDA comes through this Lima bypass graft. And uh, quite often in such cases, we do triple injection with one catheter in each of the two coronary arteries and uh, one catheter in the Lima graft. But what can be done instead is the so-called sequential dual guide catheter technique. We start first with uh, one guide in the native vessel and one in the graft, and then we switch to two guide catheters in the two native vessels. Step number four is crossing the saphenous vein graft with a guide wire. 
The way to do this depends on whether the vein graft is open or occluded. If it's open, then a workhorse wire would typically suffice. But if the bypass graft, if the vein graft is occluded, then we typically use a combination of a large microcatheter for more support, along with a stiff tip polymer jacketed wire like the Pilot 200 or the Gladius wire or the Raider wire. This provides good penetration while at the same time reducing the risk of perforation. If the proximal cap is hardened and calcified sometimes, a stiff tip non-polymer wire may be used, but then it should be switched for a polymer jacketed wire to cross the body of the vein graft. Again, the bigger single lumen microcatheters like the Corsair and Turnpike are preferred because they provide good support. Also, the angulated microcatheters are very useful for angulating the for navigating the angulation of the distal anastomosis. And sometimes the dual lumen microcatheters can help in that respect as well. In terms of the wires, as we mentioned, for crossing the occluded SVGs, the stiff polymer jacketed wires are the ones that are preferred. These are some of the potential challenges with the distal anastomosis. Sometimes the angle is favorable and is easy to be crossed retrograde, but sometimes the angle can be acute and going retrograde here can be much more challenging. How to overcome this challenge? Various solution. The one is to use a polymer jacketed wire, and specifically the Pilot 200 has less tendency to prolapse and can be very useful for such vessels. Second solution is to use an angulated microcatheter, such as the Supercross or the Shapeit or the Venture. The third one is to use the reversed guide wire technique. And the fourth one is to use a deflection balloon inflated just distal to the vein graft touchdown that then is used to deflect the guide wire to go retrogradely. These are some examples. This is an example of a deflection balloon. We have this saphenous vein graft going to the obtuse marginal branch. This graft had recurrent failure. We want to recanalize the native circumflex. And then we had difficulty delivering the wire retrograde. The angulation is uh, fairly tight. Despite using a venture and a polymer jacketed Sion black wire, we were not able to do so. But then we inflated a balloon just distal to the vein graft touchdown. And after doing that, we were able to deflect a Pilot 200 wire to go retrograde and then deliver the microcaster over it. This is another case showing retrograde through an occluded vein graft. This is an example of a um, right coronary artery CTO. The saphenous vein graft is occluded but has a nice entry to it. So presumably this is a relatively fresh occlusion. So how can we help recanalize this native CTO? We can try to go retrograde through the saphenous vein graft. We did use a Corsair along with the Mongo polymer jacketed wire that advanced nicely all the way down to the distal anastomosis. Once we deliver the wire, got the microcatheter, did the dual injection through the microcatheter and through the occluded RCA guide, and then we were able to advance the microcatheter and the wire retrograde. This is the final angiogram showing a successful recanalization of the native right. This is case number three showing sometimes the difficulty that can be encountered when there is a stand across the distal SVG anastomosis. This is a patient who has uh, occluded right coronary, native right coronary artery with a saphenous vein graft that has had a recurrent failure. In this case, the retrograde approaches was uh, very challenging because there was the previously placed stand from the vein graft into the native coronary artery that made wiring quite challenging. Moving on, step number five is to confirm that the guide wire is in true lumen. This is the same for every retrograde approach. And then uh, uh, crossing with the microcaster, again, this is done in a standard way. Usually the vein grafts are relatively easy to cross. They are larger than the epicardial and septal collaterals. Step number seven is to cross the actual CTO. Some things that are slightly different for vein grafts one of them is that the cart, which is inflating a retrograde balloon and crossing 
into the distal true lumen with an undergrade balloon can be a good option from the vein grafts because those grafts usually have a large lumen. So this is a patient who has this uh, saphenous vein graft going to the PDA. There is a native uh, right coronary artery CTO. There is heavy calcification in the native right coronary artery. We do see the bypass graft that has a previously uh, placed stand that has been failing. So in that case, um, we uh, plan to go retrograde to canalize the distal right coronary artery. We delivered an undergrade balloon but had difficulty making the two uh, wires match. Eventually what happened is we delivered a retrograde balloon inflated the retrograde balloon, and that enabled the undergrade wire to cross through. This is the cart technique. Again, the illustration, reverse cart is when the balloon is advanced over the undergrade wire. Cart is when the balloon is advanced over the retrograde guide wire. This can be very challenging for septal and especially epicardial collaterals, but it's much easier to do through saphenous vein grafts. Occasionally, we have delivered bulk equipment, even covered stents, in cases of perforation. And in this case, doing the CART and after standing, a nice result was achieved. Sometimes the CTO crossing may fail, but if we have crossed the vein graft, then the vein graft CTO can be stented to at least provide some perfusion to the vessel. Even though this is a class three indication by the guidelines, patency is not the best, but it's better than um, leaving it occluded if the native CTO again cannot be recanalized. This is a patient who has um, a complex LAD CTO, has epicardial collaterals. He had occluded uh, right coronary artery and a vein graft to the LAD. The retrograde approach from the right failed, but then we're able to go through the occluded SVG to the LAD. And we could not open the native CTO, but we were able to stand the vein graft to the LAD. Moving on, step number eight is wire externalization, which again is very similar with uh, retrograde through other conduits. It is important, especially for vein grafts, to use uh, short guides and have long wires like the R350 or RG3 to be able to externalize the guide wire. And the final step is to remove the externalized wire, which is also done in the standard fashion. One topic that is specific for the saphenous vein grafts is whether it should be occluded after the native CTO is recanalized. And this remains a controversial topic. There is some data that if the vein graft remains open and there is strong collateral flow, then that can cause thrombosis of the freshly placed stents. So the goals of uh, occluding the graft is to minimize the risk of the, of the native vessel developing stent thrombosis. And also, in some patients who have vein graft aneurysms, this is one way to exclude the aneurysm from the circulation and prevent it from growing. How to occlude it? The graft can be occluded with coils, the unplugger, vascular plug, cover stents in the native artery, or a combination. But this will be covered in more detail in video 8.3.9. Very important for vein graft aneurysms is to occlude both uh, proximal and distal to the aneurysms. Otherwise, the aneurysm will still have access to the circulation and the systemic pressure and is likely to enlarge. We can see here an example. This patient had a um, canalization of the native RCA CTO, but we do have fairly brisk flow through the saphenous vein graft. So the patient had implantation of an unplatzer, vascular plaque 2 that closed the saphenous vein graft, and now we'll have a better undergrade flow through the native right coronary artery. What are the potential complications of uh, crossing a vein graft for the retrograde approach? It can cause ischemia, dissection, there can be perforation that can lead into um, medi mediastinal effusion. Also, there can be a fracture of the tip. And one embolization that is more specific for vein graft is distal embolization, especially in recently occluded bypass grafts that may have a large amount of thrombus. So to summarize, 
going retrograde through Schaffen with Weingraft. It is an appealing option for the retrograde approach. It has intermediate risk compared with septals. It's a little more than the septals, but less than epicardials. One can use both patent and occluded Sathenus vein graft for retrograde crossing. Support is important. L1 for the left sided grafts, multipurpose for the right, and use of guide extensions. For occluded Sathenus vein grafts, uh, typically a large microcatheter is used along with a polymer jacketed stiff wire. The distal anastomosis can be difficult to navigate because of tortuosity, but there are several techniques such as polymer jacketed wires, angulated microcatheters, the reversed guide wire technique, and using the balloon deflection technique. Because the vein grafts are big, one can use the cart technique, that is advancing a balloon over the vein graft to use it for the undergrade wire to cross. And uh, if treatment of the native coronary artery CTO fails, sometimes the CTO of the vein graft can be standed to provide some flow to the target vessel. In terms of complications, one should be aware of the distal embolization as well as the perforation of the saphenous vein grafts. Thank you.